Congressman Alan Grayson on the line with us. He's representing the 9th District of Florida. Congressman with Guts.com. Is that still uh, your website, sir? Yes, and I'm always prepared to discuss wretchedness. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, I, it, Jefferson said that the solution to wretchedness was to tax the higher portions of property, in other words, the wealthy people, in geometric progression as they rise. So... Well, I, Not think, too bad. I think there's an underlying truth to that. We, we have all sorts of government policies right now that increase inequality. Yes. One is the fact that ordinary people have to pay up to 35% of their income in federal income taxes, and Mitt Romney had to pay, what, 14? Yeah, well, and that was 14 when he didn't, he, that year he didn't count the money he gave to his church. So it probably would have been actually 10 or 11, which is what he typically paid. Right. So if you have that system over time, of course, there's going to be an accumulation of wealth. The rich will get richer, the poor will get poorer. Yeah. Also, we have another illustration of this with Elizabeth Warren's bill. Uh, she points out that it's for student loans right now, which are issued by the government directly since the Obama administration changed that policy, for student loans, students are paying much, much more than Wall Street's paying for its borrowings from the government through the Federal Reserve. Right. I she's did. saying let's bring it down one so that it's equal to the other. If you don't, then Wall Street gets richer and richer and students get poorer and poorer. Right. Why should students pay 3.4%, I think it is, and it's going to go up to 6.8% on July 1st if Congress does nothing? Why should students pay that when the banksters are paying less than 1%? Yes. Yeah, so whether you're talking about tax breaks or whether you're talking about government programs or whether you're talking about no-bid contracts, over and over again, what you see is that the government has been helping the rich get richer and the poor get poorer instead yeah. of the opposite. Now, and another piece of this is when Ronald Reagan came into office, about 34%, as I recall, of our GDP was the consequence of manufacturing. Maybe it wasn't that high. Maybe it was in the high 20s. But whatever it was, it was it was it was substantial. It was more than a quarter of our GDP was from manufacturing. That is down to around 11 percent now, if I'm remembering my numbers correctly. And this is in large part because we have gone insane with regard to trade. Well, yes, and and we we've been active in that area as well. Uh, just this past week, uh, the Obama administration invited comments on the transatlantic partnership, which is a, a effort to basically take NAFTA and extend it to Europe. And uh, before we asked our own audience to go to our website and submit comments, there had only been 113 comments submitted against this free trade giveaway, which, among other things, would allow corporations to sue national governments to prevent them from doing things like protecting their consumers. Now, this was, uh, you're taking comments over at Grayson.house.gov? No, we're taking them at a website called tradetreachery.com. Aha! Uh -huh. Perfect name. Uh, Tread, uh, and, the, and again, it's just another one of these so-called free trade deals that, that ends up hurting the public, um, ends up giving away sovereignty for no particular reason. Well, there is a particular reason, and that's that the big multinational corporations that don't pay taxes and suck money out of this company get to make more money. Well, that's true. But I'm happy to report that with giving people barely 24 hours notice, we were able to get over 10,000 comments submitted at tradetreachery.com, which we then turned around and officially submitted to the Obama administration to give these people a piece of our mind for a change. Yeah. Uh, and, and in doing so, uh, swamped the, the other comments, which were all submitted by lobbyists, generally speaking, uh, by a ratio of 100 to 1. That is great. You know, the thing that uh, uh, boggles my mind, I've been going on about the Tea Party today, uh, you know, the whole IRS thing is in the news, and we've been talking about that. But one of the things when I have Tea Partiers on uh, to debate, and, which is fairly common, that we uh, seem to agree on, except the official Tea Partiers. I mean, the, uh, when I get on the ones who are paid by the Koch brothers or by Dick Army, you know, they, they're all in favor of free trade. But uh, when you get on the grassroots Tea Partiers, the people who are just kind of, the, you know, they've just been sucked up in the movement and they don't understand that it's really funded by billionaires. Um, and you talk about free trade, they will be the first to say Ross Perot was right, uh, Bill Clinton and George Herbert Walker Bush were wrong, and NAFTA, CAFTA, SHAFTA, all of them, they're, they're, they're screwing us. Yes, and, and in particular, we're giving them the device to screw us further. For instance, uh, the government wanted to limit the sale of candy-flavored cigarettes. Candy-flavored cigarettes. Right. And uh, under NAFTA, corporations who distribute these cigarettes sued in order to have this, this bill thrown out. Uh, we, we are essentially turning over our sovereignty to the, the people who care nothing except the bottom line, care nothing about our health, compare nothing, care nothing about our safety. And, and we're, we're giving them a license. We're actually giving them means. Are you to, talking to keep about us from protecting ourselves? Are you talking about candy cigarettes or are you talking about 
actual tobacco cigarettes that have a candy flavoring to them. Oh, uh, and see now you, you you've gone past the limit of what I what I, what okay. I actually know. Right. Yeah. Um, I, my understanding um, is that the, the the that in order to um, prevent the sale in general or the appeal right. of cigarettes to younger people, the government said that you can't. Add, our government said you can't add flavoring of any kind, including candy flavored flavoring. Huh. This, this actually became an issue with part of uh, the audience because they they banned clove flavored cigarettes at the same time. Oh, interesting. So clove-flavored cigarettes actually are used by people from uh, Southeast Asia. Yes. But I, I'm getting off the subject. The point is that we, we gave these multinational tobacco corporations, who care nothing about health, obviously. Right, they're killing hundreds the of thousands. to sue in court to prevent the, the popular will from being carried out. They can sue against regulations. They can sue against laws. They can sue against anything that reflects our efforts to protect ourselves from them. Right. And, and we have no recourse because we have turned our sovereignty. The, American, the United States, uh, since NAFTA, GATT, and the WTO, uh, has not been a sovereign nation. Here's another thing that, that confuses me. Uh, we're talking with Congressman Alan Grayson, U.S. Congressman from the 9th District, grayson.house.gov, Congressman with guts.com, um, and tradetreachery.com. And um, is that in my father's generation, in fact, when I was... 12, 13 years old, my dad took me to a John Birch Society meeting. My dad was a big Republican. And not a big, I mean, he was big on the Republican Party. And uh, they were all hysterical about, uh, we had surrendered sovereignty to the United Nations by, say, by signing uh, agreements and treaties that said that we would not declare war on another country unless we were attacked first or it was authorized by the United Nations. And that is a surrender of sovereignty, but you could argue, and I would argue, that uh, it's a surrender of sovereignty in exchange for something that's really good, which is world peace. Um, but with trade policies, we're surrendering sovereignty, that is the right to make our own decisions, um, to transnational corporations whose only motive is profit. How does that benefit the United States? Well, it doesn't, and it's particularly insidious because rather than having to prove their case in court uh, before judges who are appointed for life, what happens instead is that they have to prove their case in, before trade tribunals uh, which are populated almost entirely by corporate lobbyists. So right. they've even stacked the deck in that regard. So the judge and jury is a bunch of corporate lobbyists. Why would it be that the people who were, you know, my dad's era, John Birch Society, are, are today's, um, you know, right-wing Republicans um, why, and, and Tea Partiers, why would they, well, as I said, some of, some, I guess some of the, many of the grassroots Tea Partiers are with us on this, but, but some are not. Why would anybody in their right mind, be in favor of free trade? Well, at this point, it's become an alliance between uh, companies that essentially embody the Koch brothers' philosophy, uh, and they're useful idiots in the public. Mm. That's, that's where we are at this point. I, I mean, the NAFTA did something that you wouldn't even think is possible. It managed to impoverish both American workers and Mexican workers. Right. Uh, right. And, and for whom? For the benefit of multinational corporations only. Yeah, exclusively, and they're doing very, very well. Thank you very much. And their CEOs are doing very well, and they're and they're and they're paying lower taxes than the rest of us, and in some cases, no taxes at all. And the sad thing is that these agreements get negotiated in secret. The Obama administration has consistently refused to release any drafts of these agreements, except to corporate lobbyists. Wow. So Exxon knows what's in these agreements in their current drafts, and you and I don't. Well, actually, I do, but <laughs> I can't talk about it because it's classified. That's incredible. That's incredible. We have just a little less than a minute. We're talking with Congressman Alan Grayson, uh, U.S. Congressman from Florida, grayson.house.gov, uh, Congressman with guts.com, tradetreachery.com. What would you suggest? What, what's your call for action to our audience, for people who are concerned about this? Well, right, right tomorrow we're having a hearing about another one of these trade agreement giveaways here in the House. And mm -hmm. the record for that hearing is open to the public. So we're inviting people, again, to come to the website, give more comments about this. We're going to send out another email to our fan club. Uh, you can sign up for that at congressmanwithguts.com and invite people to put this in the record. And I expect the same result. You know, if we consistently show 100 to 1 against, time after time after time, every time they open up the public record on this, they can't ignore that. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And hopefully they won't. And, and so, because it really is the Congress, the, it's the, the we the people versus the corporate lobbyists. Congressman Alan Grayson, thanks so much for the great work you're doing and for being on our program today. Thank you, too. Bye. Good talking with you. 45 minutes past the hour. We'll be back. 
with more of uh, your thoughts, my thoughts, and the news of the day right after this. You're listening to the Tom Hartman Program. Visit TomHartman.com for audio and video archives. And back to the IRS. How, again, is the Tea Party a social welfare organization? Who, does it, who are the poor that it feeds? 